Hi guys, it's Sandy. I just wanted to bring in a video today to show you what to actually do with some of the preps that you have bought. So we're gonna talk about light today because it's really important whenever you buy the things, you have to practice with them and know how to actually use them so that you're ready, not whenever you get into a situation and then try to figure it out. So it's very important to have light because light, <laughs> Real dark is really dark, like pitch dark is very dark. So if the electric would go off for, there's many reasons that could happen, right? Um, it could be a natural disaster. And with all the different natural disasters that are going on right now, all over the world, between wildfires and extreme heat and drought and extreme floods, um, we just never know what could happen. We're getting closer to winter. We could have big ice storms or snowstorms where I live. Um, so it, you just never know hurricanes. Like you just have to be ready for anything. Those of you that have lived through hurricanes or different other disasters, you know that it is really important to have some preps. But or even a cyber attack. So that's a word that we never really thought about, but now that we know about them, we know that that actually could happen. It's something that uh, we think about a little bit more now because if a cyber attack did happen, it could knock out the electric grid. So that's why it's so important to have this, know what to do with it because you're not gonna, if you don't have electric, you won't have the internet. So you won't be able to look at the instructions. So that's why I always say, get the stuff, practice with it, have it ready so that you are ready whenever you actually need it. And if you'll just take a second and hit that like button below and comment, um, it would really help me because it shows this video to more people on YouTube and that is what helps get the word out. I just wanted to bring, um, I'm gonna show you how to do an oil lantern. That was the main thing of this video, but I do wanna show you some other options. Like this light I got off of Amazon. It is a battery powered light. So it's nice to have something battery powered, really quick and easy to pick up. Make sure you have the batteries and make sure they're installed though. If you just buy the stuff, leave it in the box, then you're not gonna be ready whenever you need it. So here's that, I'm gonna set that aside. Another option is always to use solar light because just using the um, sun. Now, if you live in a place though that gets dark early in the winter uh, or um, you know, up in, the, up in the north, like where I am, it doesn't always work, but these are nice option to have. Put them outside and you can put them in a glass container in your house and, um, and use the power of the sun any time. But one of the best sources of light is these oil lanterns that have been used for generations because they really work. They last for oh, years and years and years. My mamma had them in her house, they, the same ones that they used over and over again. Um, they're really nice to have. They're called hurricane lanterns, and the reason is um, in a hurricane, this globe protects the, the light source, so you'll still have light. So you could put this in front of a fan at your house, turn it on full blast, and the light will still work. So these are just a really nice option to have. A lot of campers already use these. Um, so let me show you how to use it, how to put it together, how to use it, how to fill it up and, and get the wick going, and also how to change the wick, because that's really important, you guys. Whenever you buy these, you'll get one little short wick in it, and that is it. Well, once this wick is gone, you have to have other wicks, so you have to know that you have to buy extra wick and how to put it in there. So do these things, buy these things, practice and know what to do in case of an emergency that you need these, um, a light source. Okay, so here are just a few different kinds. I have this and this are both a Dietz, if, if I'm saying that correctly, um, just a small one. And then I do have this larger one. I ordered this off Amazon and when I got it, I was like, holy moly, that is really big. But I decided to keep it because it is a great source of light and uh, in the winter time, it's also a great source of heat. It does, uh, the oils do put off a source of heat. Now this one I just bought in the camping section at Walmart. I've had it about a year. I um, haven't had to use it, but I have it just in case. So you can order uh, online. You can go to the camping section at your stores, wherever you can get these. So first I'm gonna show you how to fill it up. It is super important to have the correct kind of fuel. This is a clean heat. Um, fuel. This is a lamp oil fuel. I do not know if a 
olive oil or vegetable oils. I know there's are oils that can burn, but I do not know about the safety of putting them into these lanterns. I do know that these work and they are what the manufacturer suggests. So that's what I'm going with. You'll have to have a funnel. Ooh. And you have to have something to soak up the oil if it leaks. So a funnel is really important. Now let me show you the parts of this. So this is the tank. It's what holds the fuel and it just has a screw on um, top that you'll take off to fill up the fuel. This is the globe. This right here is the wick razor. You can see my wick coming up and down. Let me show you close. The wick razor knob, it raises and lowers the wick. This right here, uh, right here, yep. This right here is the thumb lever. It will raise and lower your globe for you. So you take your lamp oil or your fuel oil. I'm actually gonna use the clean heat right now, but you just um, pour it into your um, container here. Now there, make sure that you do not overfill this. You don't want it overfilled and also, if you're gonna leave fuel in here, make sure it's only like 70 to 80% uh, full because different areas have different barometric pressure. You don't want this so full that whenever you're storing it, that the fuel starts coming out the top. So all I do is pour my fuel down into the tank. This one's almost full, so I don't have to worry about it. Actually, I should have had this over here. I didn't leak any, but if you do, just put some newspaper, paper towel, something, just so you don't leak onto your um, surface. Mostly if you're doing this where you, uh, like a kitchen uh, bar, where you actually make your food too. Now, this is only to be used for my lamp oil and my um, heater oil. Do not use this for food too. You don't want to cross-contaminate. So make sure you have a funnel that is just for your, um, Lantern, hmm, goodness. Okay, so um, you'll want to have this fuel sit in here for at least 20 minutes to an hour because it has to get the wick saturated. Otherwise, you're gonna try to burn a, a dry wick and you're just gonna burn your wick down. So you wanna make sure, let it sit, and then it's gonna be saturated and then you're going to be able to light it. And you can actually tell there's a different color in the wick whenever it is saturated. It gets a darker color. And to light it, you just raise your globe up so that you can get to your wick. Now, um, your wick just needs to be up far enough that you can easily light it. And then we're going to um, raise and lower it where we want it to make it a good flame. So just get your uh, match in here, get your wick lit. And, um, hey, matches are a good thing to stock up on also. Get some in your house, they're super cheap. So then you just lower your globe back down again. And then see where it's smoky? That's because it's up too high. So all I need to do is move my wick right here. See how I'm turning it? Just turn it to where it doesn't smoke so much. So now there's a nice flame and it's already stopped smoking now. And now you've got a really nice burning lantern here. That's the perfect height right here for mine. Now I'm gonna show you how to change this wick out. But first to extinguish this flame, all you need to do is just lower it down in. See how it's getting less? Lower it down in and the flame goes out. Now, um, let it sit there for just a second because sometimes those embers will still be there. When you raise it back up, it can catch again. This one is totally out. So now I have this lantern ready for use whenever we're ready for it. <laughs> so let it cool down before you put it away. This one is uh, hot, so I'm not gonna change the wick in this one, but I am gonna show you how to change the wick in this one. Okay, so now to change the wick. Now I want you to see, obviously there's a very different size here of the lantern. So there's also a different size of what the wick size is like. So make sure and get the proper wick size for the lantern that you are using. And then I bought these in a six foot rolls off of Amazon. I actually went to, um, this one I said I got at Walmart, but these other ones, they're on Amazon. I will link the lantern that I got and the wick size that is appropriate for each lantern so that you get the right one. So all you're gonna do is cut off a wick off of there. Just make sure you use some good scissors, get a nice straight cut on here. Um, I cut off like anywhere five, six inches. Um, I don't really measure it, just you know, kind of eyeball five to six inches here. So let me get this one out of the way. Now what we're gonna do is, this by the way is just how you carry it. 
So this right here is the lever that raises and lowers your globe. So you can get in here to, you know, light it. But let me flip back down. As far as getting my globe out though, I just pull on this right here, pull it up, and then my globe rolls back and forth here. So I'm gonna take my globe out. Now listen, the globes do get dirty. So you need to take this sometimes <clears throat> and wash it out with just soap and water because they'll get smoky. And if they do get smoky, they're not gonna learn, uh, work as well. They're not gonna be as bright. So um, wash these out whenever they do get kind of yucky. And you can take a wet rag and wash, uh, wipe off up in here anytime also. Now, as far as getting to my wick, I just tilt this backwards. This portion right here comes right off of the top. And then this comes out. Now see, my wick obviously is not used. It's down in here. You always have to make sure that your wick is long enough that it's gonna be down in the fuel um, getting uh, saturated. So whenever it gets too short, you need to take it out. So here's just the wick. This is what came with it. I just have other wicks uh, ready. So you just take your wick and if you have a nice um, cut, then it's easy to get in. If it's frayed, it's a little bit harder. So just make sure you have a nice blunt cut. So you just take this and put it into the bottom of here and then you take the um, wick uh, knob <laughs> and you just start turning until it catches. So then whenever it catches, it'll just come right up. And then this is what uh, raises and lowers it. So I just take the new wick, I stick it right down into, I meant maybe this, See how that hole is right there? You just stick it right down into here. Obviously, if it's full of fuel or has fuel in it, you don't lift it up. You don't, you just let it, you know, sit there. Then you take your top and just stick it right back on so that the wick is coming right out of the top of it. And then just secure that into place. Well, wait a minute. Let me move that so it actually goes in. Okay, there we go. I secured that into place. That way the wick comes out perfect exactly how it's supposed to. And then I just simply put that right back down. Then I just pull up the top again, move that out, put the globe back in, put the top back down, and it's ready to go. All right, I hope this was helpful. Just make sure whatever you buy, practice with it so that you know how to use it and make sure that it's ready for use rather than just sitting in the box and then whenever you need it, you have to panic and not know what to do. I would highly recommend that you start getting some things in your house, getting some preps, and until next time, I'm out.